Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Saturn and specifically its rings. We're going to find out how much mass there actually is in these beautiful formations around Saturn and we also are going to find out what happens if all of this stuff comes down to Earth. Welcome to What The Math. So the reality of Saturn is that it actually has tremendously large rings and technically we shouldn't really even be calling them rings because they're more of a disk than they are rings. Even though most people kind of assume that it's just a bunch of um, concentric rings around Saturn, the reality of all of this is that it is a huge, huge disk of material around Saturn from as low as 7,000 kilometers above the surface. In comparison, I guess, uh, you could think of International Space Station as orbiting only at a distance of about 300 kilometers. And uh, they go as far as 13 million, which is, let me just show you how far away this is. 13 million kilometers away, which is somewhere right here. This is actually a more faint ring that is barely visible at all. Now, the rings are actually very different, both in composition and density um, and in the way that they are created. But for the most part, with very minor exceptions, it's basically all made out of water ice. It's about 99.9% .9 water ice, uh, with maybe 0.1% of rock. And what's really, really interesting about the rings of Saturn is that they actually have their own miniature atmosphere. Like, very, very, very miniature. But in other words, independent of Saturn itself, there's actually a bit of a gas-like atmospheric uh, pressure in the region of rings, specifically the thickest part of the rings. And uh, it's mostly made up of um, oxygen and hydrogen, because basically this is water that's being broken apart by the solar radiation. So this is actually something that most people don't realize, that rings are basically like their own little creations with their own atmosphere and their own behavior and their own uh, composition. Very different from Saturn. Now the first time we visited Saturn was with Voyager 1 craft, and uh, this is, as you can see, is back in 1980. We took some really good photos of Saturn, we also learned quite a lot of things about it. And um, we were able to even study some of its rings and capture some of the really, really um, unusual things about it, including finding some new moons we didn't even know existed. And uh, since then we obviously came back several times to Saturn. The most amazing mission was of course uh, the Cassini mission that even landed a probe on the moon Titan, which was probably one of the biggest achievements of the human race. But uh, other than that, what, we, what you need to know about uh, Saturn's rings is that we actually don't know much about them. Unfortunately, even today, we don't even know how they were created. Well, there's theories, but none of them have exact um, or specific facts yet. And uh, some people believe that these rings are as old as 4 billion years old or as young as 100 million years old. So there's a huge discrepancy in, in age. And one of the reasons we don't know about the age is because the rings of Saturn seem to be very bright and very, very um, unpolluted in a sense. Anything that's old in our solar system usually has very, very dark formations, um, very sort of sort of soothy and very grayed out and dark um, appearance, but these little guys are actually relatively bright. Each one of them, each particle here, that's actually anywhere between micrometer to several meters in size, is actually somewhat uh, young in appearance, so we're not really sure how old they are. Some people think they came from the beginning of the solar system, but some people think this was actually a moon that fell apart. And this makes the most sense. And so this is actually what we're going to focus on. We're going to find out how massive uh, all of the stuff is if you combine it into one piece and basically find out how big the actual moon may have been before it sort of fell apart and created the rings. So this is actually the most prominent theory today. Most people believe that a moon and or asteroid came really, really close to Saturn. And then because of the Roche limit, which is a concept I've talked about previously, which I'm going to just demonstrate to you by placing, let's say, uh, Vesta here. 
just place it right next to Saturn and you'll see what happens to it in a second. Uh, but basically, yeah, so because of the Roche limit, the object that's going to be in orbit here is going to slowly fall apart and basically create another relatively large ring. So this is kind of what we think may have happened uh, possibly millions of years ago, possibly even billions of years ago, and this is what we think may have created the rings of Saturn. And by the way, these rings were originally discovered back in 1655 by uh, the famous astronomer Christian um, Huygens. And this is actually why the probe that landed on Titan was named Huygens probe. So anyway, let's actually do some math here. Well, we're not really going to do math, but we're going to combine all of the material from the rings. We're going to basically clump it all into one large piece and find out how big the actual piece is. But uh, we're going to start by placing this piece around Saturn, and then we're actually going to try to collide it with planet Earth. So um, let's start by basically imagining, if we were to kind of combine all of this, uh, how big it would get. So the total mass here is approximately 3 times 10 to the power of 19 kilograms. And some people think that because of the hidden materials in orbit around Saturn, it could be as high as 9 times 10 to the 19th power, which basically means that it's going to be about this big. So let's zoom into it. Um, and actually, we need to change the density because it's mostly water. It's going to be 1 gram per centimeter cube. Um, and let's just correct this here. This should be in power 19. And here we go. So it's it's an object that's approximately 137 kilometers in radius. Now this is the minimum of the size of this object. Basically, this is the smallest limit here, and uh, and it's going to be an object that's about 193 kilometers in radius. And this is actually the smallest uh, object we think it might be, but some people think that it's actually a little bit larger, possibly even three times larger. So this would be an object that's about. 278 kilometers in radius. This is actually relatively large. This is, as you can see, an object that would form a dwarf planet. It would be a planetoid that would be spherical in size. So this is actually a lot of mass here. And so for this reason, many scientists believe that this used to be a moon that possibly received a collision from something. And most likely four to 4.5 billion years ago during the uh, late heavy bombardment, when actually was, uh, this was when our own moon was made as well. And so here, there might have been a moon that's maybe about 400 to 600 kilometers in diameter, so about this size, that then kind of fell apart and created the rings. Now, let's go to our planet Earth and let's place this object in orbit around Earth and then see what happens. But also, let's just actually collide it afterwards as well, because I would like to see how much damage it would actually cause to our planet. So the entire amount of rings would be about this big. This is what it's like in comparison to our planet Earth. And if you were to place the moon here, so let's actually just grab our moon, it would be significantly bigger. But because this is actually uh, tiny particles from the rings all combined into one sort of chunk, this does make it a lot, a lot of mass. Obviously, this is nothing in comparison to actual Saturn, but still, this is pretty large. And obviously, if we collide this with our planet Earth, it's going to create some real, real havoc on the planet. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to stop this from moving around our planet. Basically, we're going to give it zero velocity and have it just kind of fall to the surface of the planet. So here, zero velocity. Let's make sure that the mass is actually... Well, let's, let's actually increase it to the maximum mass we think it is, which is 9 times 10 to the power of 19. And let's just have it fall to the, to the planet. So here we have this very large object that's going to kind of slowly fall apart as well because of the Roche limit here. But as it falls to the planet, you will notice that it also accelerates because of the gravity of Earth. And this is much, much, much larger than pretty much any asteroid that collided with the planet. Way, way bigger than the one that killed dinosaurs. As you can imagine, it's going to cause almost total destruction on the planet. And here we go. So if the rings of Saturn collided with our planet Earth, you would most likely experience this. 
it would pretty much completely destroy our planet. The explosion would be so dramatic that the earthquakes alone would most likely destroy everything on the planet. The shockwave here would cause tremendous destruction, lots of tsunamis, lots of everything, volcanic eruptions that would cover the air with pretty much uh, the thickest amount of dust you can imagine. And as you can see, the green planet is no longer green. So this only took a few hours to basically completely destroy everything. Uh, now, it's, some things would obviously survive, specifically things in the ocean, bacterial life, uh, possibly single cellular life, and maybe even some plants would survive. Uh, but the majority of large organisms, including humans, would probably perish pretty fast. Mostly because our food would actually die, and without food we would also die as well. As you can see, the temperature is also decreasing. It actually was, I think it was as high as 500 degrees Celsius at some point. And all of the water now evaporated from the planet as well. So that's the new world that you would have if all of the mass from the Saturn's rings basically collided with our planet. Now, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. So now you kind of know how much of the actual mass there is in the rings of Saturn and how big of an object it would create if you were to combine it all together. Other than that, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Let's just cool down Earth and see what happens to it afterwards. That's really it. Thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.